British soldiers in Ukraine helping fire missiles, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz reveals. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has come under fire from the UK after he suggested that there were British troops operating in the Ukraine conflict. Olaf Scholz said that he would not deliver the long-range Taurus missiles, Berlin's equivalent of a storm shadow, as it would require soldiers assisting on the ground, citing the UK and French approach with their own systems. Scholz argued that following the UK would make Germany a participant in the war. The comments were seen as endangering British military and diplomatic personnel on the ground. Scholz went on to say that Taurus is a very long-range weapon, and what was done on the part of the British and French in terms of target control and target control assistance can't be done in Germany. Commenting on Scholz's remark, Tobias Elwood, the former chair of the British Commons Defence Committee, said it was a flagrant abuse of intelligence deliberately designed to distract from Germany's reluctance to arm Ukraine with its own long-range missile system, as quoted by the Telegram. The British lawmaker was also sure that the statement would be used by Russia to ratchet up the escalator ladder. German soldiers can, at no point and in no place, be linked with the targets that this system reaches. Scholz insisted, even if operating from German soil, according to the DPA news agency. The German chancellor stated that it would be not very responsible for his country to risk becoming a party to the war. Meanwhile, the Financial Times quoted an anonymous senior European defense official as saying that everyone knows that there are Western special forces in Ukraine. They've just not acknowledged it officially. U.S. military warns of environmental disaster after spill in Red Sea caused by Houthi attacks. U.S. CENTCOM has warned of an environmental disaster following an attack by Yemen's Houthis on a cargo ship that caused an oil slick in the Red Sea. On the 18th of February, the Houthis targeted a UK-owned bulk carrier named Rubimar, flagged by Belize. The ship was sailing through the Bab al-Mandeb Strait, connecting the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden en route to Bulgaria from Khor Fakan in the United Arab Emirates when it was attacked by multiple missiles. The Rubimar, a Belize-flagged but British-owned bulk carrier, has been drifting in the Red Sea after it was struck by two missiles. The ship, which is feared to be in danger of sinking, is leaking an 18-mile oil spill and carrying 41,000 tons of volatile fertilizer. The 22nd of February attack on the Rubimar inflicted the most significant damage so far on a commercial ship since the Houthis started targeting vessels in November. The Houthis say their attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea are in solidarity with the stricken people of Gaza. CENTCOM posted on X that the unprovoked and reckless attack by Iran-backed Houthi terrorists caused significant damage to the ship, which caused an 18-mile oil slick. It has long been feared that the Houthis might extend their actions by disrupting internet traffic and cutting sea cables. 16 small fiber optic lines across the bed of the Red Sea carry about 17% of all international data traffic, including trunk lines connecting Europe with India and East Asia. It was reported on Monday that cables belonging to four big telecom networks, including the Asia Africa Europe 1, TGN Atlantic, Europe India Gateway and the Seacom system have been damaged in recent months. The cause of the damage has not been identified and natural damage happens relatively regularly. Israeli media reports attributed the damage to Houthi actions, but Yemen's Houthi-controlled communications ministry denied involvement. Iran's Basij militia claims the ground has been prepared for Israel's disappearance. The commander of Iran's Basij militia claims the ground has been prepared for Israel's disappearance as the regime's proxies around the region continue attacks on the Jewish state and its ally, the US. The biggest media giants are Jews. They know that the Islamic Republic of Iran has targeted the existence of the Zionist regime and the groundwork for its eradication has been laid, Golam Riza Soleimani stated during a public gathering. The statement comes after Iran vowed its proxy groups will rally around the Palestinian Hamas and eventually defeat Israel. However, the Iranian regime has stayed out of the Gaza war as Israel has vowed to dismantle Hamas. Iran-backed Hamas, 
has since been supported by Iran's proxies in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon and Yemen, who have attacked Israel from its northern border and Red Sea coast and U.S. facilities across the region, punishment for Biden's support for Israel's right to defend itself in the wake of the October atrocities. Soleimani has repeatedly vocalized the regime's sentiments towards Israel as money is poured into overseas proxies in the war on Israel and the U.S., a justification of the misplaced budget priorities as the country suffers its worst economic crisis since the founding of the Islamic Republic. In 2015, Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, who founded the proxy militias as a strategy to eliminate its archenemy, said the Jewish state must be destroyed in 25 years. The government set up a countdown clock in Tehran and other cities to mark the journey, a gesture mocked by many Iranians. Colombian soldiers replace fighting drug cartels with a war on Putin. The sound of Colombian Spanish fills a hospital treating soldiers wounded fighting Russian forces, according to The Independent. Ukraine's ranks are depleted by two years of war. As it battles Putin's war machine, Ukraine is welcoming hardened fighters from one of the world's longest-running conflicts. Professional soldiers from Colombia bolster the ranks of volunteers from around the world who have answered Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's call for foreign fighters to join his nation's war with Russia. Colombia's military has been fighting drug trafficking cartels and rebel groups for decades, making its soldiers some of the world's most experienced. With a military of 250,000, Colombia has Latin America's second largest army after Brazil's. More than 10,000 retire each year, and hundreds are heading to fight in Ukraine, where many make four times as much as experienced, non-commissioned officers earn in Colombia, or even more. Colombia has a large army with highly trained personnel, but the pay isn't great when you compare it to other militaries, says Andre Macias of Bogotá's Externando University, who studies Colombian work for military contractors around the world. Retired Colombian soldiers began to head overseas in the early 2000s to work for U.S. military contractors protecting infrastructure, including oil wells in Iraq. Retired members of Colombia's military have also been hired as trainers in the United Arab Emirates and joined in Yemen's battle against Iran-backed Houthi rebels.